so hello dear students so we were uh, seeing the first order linear pd or the lagrange's equation so in last class we have seen the analytical proof for uh, the solution of a lagrange's equation so in today's class we will see the uh, geometric proof so the geometric proof we will be proving the theorem in two stages so in the first part what we are going to show that is all the integral surfaces are generated by the integral curves that if you are given the equation pp plus qq equal to r then the last solution so if i you take any solution of this equation so that is an integral surface then the solution the varain an integral surface so all integral surfaces uh, are generated by the integral curves of the equation and um, secondly we will prove that all surfaces generated by the integral curves of dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r so when you solve for this equation you can get different solutions u equal to c1 v equal to c2 nu parayna ana solution namaku nammal edukna choose cheyna coefficients adhaya the ratios anusarichu enike dx o dy o dy o dz o okka choose cheyam i can choose different multipliers so uh, whatever you will be getting different u and v so if uh, i take any integral curves so all the surfaces generated by the integral curves they will be solutions of pp plus qq equal to r so that's what we will be proving in the theorem so adayathu namaku basically prove cheyandi idana pp plus qq equal to r inde solution nu parayna f of u v equal to 0 aanu then u and v are obtained from uh, dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r nere thirichum adu pole thanne so uh, that's what we will prove in this theorem so we will see uh, the first case so first we will prove that all integral surfaces are generated by the integral curves of the equation dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r so we will start with an integral surface of the equation pp plus qq equal to r so let me take z equal to f of xy to be an integral surface ni uh, i can write it as f of xy minus z equal to 0 now if you take the gradient so the gradient will be the normal to this integral surface so the gradient is given by so the components of gradient will be first component is derivative with respect to x second component is derivative with respect to y then third component is derivative with respect to z so the gradient or the normal vector is given by fx fy and so derive take the derivatives here fx fy and minus 1 so which is zx zy minus 1 which i can denote as pq minus 1 so if z equal to f of xy is an integral surface angane anengil pq minus 1 ennu parayunnathu aa integral surface inde corresponding normal vector aayirikkum now uh, since this pq1 satisfies this equation so from the differential equation you have from the pd you are given pp plus qq is equal to r now you can see that you have the coefficients p q and minus 1 here so when i take the dot product of these two vectors p q minus 1 and the parayna normal vector ana no? so dot p q r is equal to 0 so that means these two vectors are perpendicular to each other now this is the normal to my surface so hence p q r must denote the tangential direction to the surface so p q minus 1 normal ayidu konde idu tangential direction corresponding aayittulla vector aayirikkum p q r so therefore p q r will be uh, the tangential direction to the integral 
surface. So, this is the normal vector to your integral surface. So, this will be the tangential vector to the integral surface. So, you have your surface here. Okay, now, what I do is, so what you have got is now the tangential direction to your surface. Now, I am choosing any arbitrary point m on the surface. Ni m in the chal at the point m you move in the tangential direction. So, consider the tangential direction then uh, move along move from the point m in the tangential direction. So, when you move uh, so you start with an arbitrary point m on your surface and move in the tangential direction. So, uh, tangent in our direction trace the bombo that will give you a curve on the surface. Now uh, the curve is traced always in the direction of PQR. So if you are taking an arbitrary point M on the surface and if you are moving in the direction of motion uh, which is PQR then we are going to trace out a curve. In a curve on the parayana that is the tangential direction of PQR. So, that curve is going to satisfy the integral equation. So, dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r. So, this curve will that will be an integral curve to this equation dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r. And uh, here uh, for a given integral surface, so PQR unique on and when I am taking a point M, so you can see that such a curve is always unique. Karnam M and the point point le tangential direction unique on So here such a curve traced will be always unique. So, therefore, since PQR is always tangential direction to the surface, we never leave the surface. In the anamala curve trace tangential direction lana. So, the curve will be lying entirely on the surface. So, since PQR is a tangential direction to the surface, va surface larikim epirum a curve. So, from this we can conclude that your integral surface is going to be generated by the integral curves of the equation dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r. So, this happens because m is arbitrary. We have m and the arbitrary point. We have a point at it will again trace a curve on your surface. So, for any arbitrary m, so, together all these curves are going to form the integral surface. So, we can conclude that uh, the integral curves are going to generate your integral surface. So, that is the first part of the theorem. So, you have m and there is only one and one integral curve of dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r and it lies entirely on the surface. So, m arbitrary aumbo, the integral surface will be generated by the integral curves. Now, we will move on to the uh, second part of the theorem. So, in the second part, we will show that all surfaces generated by the integral curves of dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r are integral surfaces to the equation p p plus q q equal to r. We will show that uh, integral curves generated in all surfaces they are going to satisfy the equation p p plus q q uh, equal to r. And now let me consider the uh, surface z equal to f of x y which is generated by the integral curves of the equation dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r 
so therefore uh, our surface in a normal in the way another that will be dou z by dou x dou z by dou y in minus 1 so that is a gradient vector and uh, it will be perpendicular to the tangential direction so the tangential direction is p q r so z x z y minus 1 will be perpendicular to the tangential direction so therefore we will get p dou z by dou x plus q dou z by dou y minus r equal to 0. So, therefore, uh, if you have a surface z equal to f of x y which is generated by the integral curves of dx by p equal to dy by q equal to dz by r. Okay. From uh, second case la namala prove in dana so, if I am taking any surface which is generated by the integral curves, so they must satisfy the equation PP plus QQ equal to R. So, here I started with Z equal to F of XY. So, we can see that Z equal to F of XY satisfies the equation PZX plus QZY minus R equal to 0. So, Z equal to F of XY will be an integral surface to the equation P P plus Q Q equal to R. Now, uh, to complete the proof, so we will show that any surface generated by the integral curves of the equation has the equation of the form f of u v equal to 0. So, we will show that any surface generated by the integral curves integral curves in the solution you can find different solutions. So, any surface which is generated by your integral curves will be of the form f of u b equal to 0. So, uh, let any curve on the surface which is not a member of u equal to c1 and v equal to c2. Suppose that has the equation phi equal to 0 and psi equal to 0. So, uh, uh, consider, uh, so your surface is obtained by the uh, equations u equal to c1 and v equal to c2. Okay. Ne, uh, suppose consider uh, any other curves which is on your surface. Okay. In prove in the dana, when you wear the surface, you wear the curve at the time. That is again going to generate your surface f of u v equal to 0. So, if we are having the equation phi equal to x y z, phi of x y z equal to 0 and psi of x y z equal to 0, which is not in the form u equal to c1. c1 na c2 na values would come up the curves align in the area phi im psi im. Uh, since phi and psi they lie on the surface uh, and u equal to c1 and v equal to c2 is the generating curve. So, what happens is both of them will intersect. Um, u equal to c1 and v equal to c2 on a surface is generated in the and phi and psi are curves which are not of this form lying on the surface. So, automatically they will be intersecting. So, uh, it will intersect at some point x, y, z. Now, using this four equations, if you eliminate x, y, z. So, if I am eliminating x, y, z from the equation. So, we are going to get a relation of the form f of c1 equal f of c1 c2 equal to 0. So, if we have null equations of the equation. Any x, y, z eliminate am. So, remaining you will have c1 and c2. So, we will obtain an equation of the form f of c1, c2 equal to 0, which again gives f of u, v equal to 0. This means f of u, v equal to 0. So, if you take uh, any other curve on the surface, again you are going to generate the uh, same surface. So, any surface generated by the integral curves, it is an integral surface. So, this completes the proof. Okay.